Good morning everybody and welcome again to my humble abode. Today I would like to build a hammer, but not just an ordinary hammer, a Tinker's Construct hammer with silky touch and uh, a hardened energy flux capacitor. I think it's a capacitor, we shall see. The first thing I'll do is I'll go and get my little book on, I want volumes and materials, volume 2, I think it's the red one. Let's have a look. No. Yes. And as you read through this book, you can write to the end of the book, it's quite a long book, telling you how to make different tools and weapons. And here we have a hammer recipe, which we're going to make, and we're also going to make uh, a silky touch, which is... this recipe. So we need one emerald and four silky cloths I th and we're also going to make this a hardened flux capacitor or let's say an energy cell. So we'll do the hardened flux capacitor first. Okay so let's go down to the uh, basement. Oh, I should only this. I put this back again now because I'm sure the recipe is in NEI. Here we go, straight to the workshop. So, the recipe for hardened energy capacitor, flux capacitor. Here we have the recipes. Let's do a hardened flux capacitor. So, that requires one flux, let's do flux capacitor, invert ingots, tin ingots. Okay. And this one is relatively straightforward. Two lead, one copper, and three redstone, and one sulfur. So let's go and get those. I actually already have some, but not enough in here of redstone. Plenty of copper. We needed one tin ingot and redstone. Redstone is here. Take a stack of that. Aluminium, silver, iron, is that tin? There we are. And we need sulfur. Sulfur should be in this chest. There's plenty of sulfur. So we put this into this chest here. We'll take that out. We don't need those. And put that back in here. That's how I got to oh, gunpowder. I don't need that, but I do have an Indorio patch on me, so I'll just put the gunpowder into the pouch, it'll disappear and be filtered. Actually, it should end up in this chest over here with the, the mob stuff in it. So, back to the flux capacitor. How oh, I got everything lead, I needed lead as well. I think I have some lead, but well, maybe only in this chest. There's plenty of lead ingots here. Take four of those. Right. So, let's say flux capacitor. Let's capture the recipe for that. So we need three redstone, one copper, two lead, and one sulfur. Now we want to, you'll notice actually this is already charging up and the reason for that is that on the on the ground floor there's a, um, a wireless charger and it charges anything you've got in your inventory up which is really quite useful. So the next one we want is a hardened flux capacitor. So basically that's made out of a leadstone, two inver ingots, redstone and tinning it. Actually I have all of those things so have I got that right? I think that was I think the Inveringuts are here and that should have been I've forgotten. We'll get the Inveringuts out first of all. 
There it is, chest two. We need two and bring it. Go back to the recipe again, and here we are. Oh, that's a tin ingot at the bottom. Okay, so invert ingot to the side, and a tin ingot at the bottom. And sure enough, I now have the hardened capacitor. Now to make the um, invert ingots is quite straightforward as well. I just put these back in this chest and show you how to do that. First of all, we need some. Um, oh, that's interesting. Oh, I haven't got any ardite and cobalt in my chest. We need some iron dust, which is fairly straightforward. Just need uh, some iron ore which I have plenty of ore and this chest which have come from the quarry not that chest, actually I think I've moved the iron ore now it's, it's so much of it I've put into its own better barrel so one iron ore and then if I go to the sagmill because the sagmill is the best for iron ore I put that into here and I will get out oh two iron ore one tin one ferrous metal absolutely perfect because to make a um, in fact I could do that in my inventory to make invert ingots you need two of the uh, iron ore one ferrous metal and you get three inver blend let's go to the smelt uh, um, the furnace Use the induction furnace is the best because it's super fast and I get the three invert ingots put those back into this chest too. What I do also need is, um, I don't even need this one, I need an emerald and I need lots of string for the silky cloth. Um, let's go back and find out what we need for the silky um, cloth. It's actually a silky jewel I think. Uh, here we are. Silky cloth. So that's one aluminium brass or gold nugget, followed by, uh, surrounded by string. And we need, I think it's four of those. So let's go and get that. In the mob chest, I have plenty of string. It's so actually a 32 I need. And a nugget. Well, the easiest is a gold nugget, of course. So we'll just take one of gold. in the middle surround that by a um, string right, holding on the shift left button there we get four cloths which I think is what I need if I'm not mistaken I can then yes I now have a silky jewel from Tinker's Construct so I have the two items that I would like to add to the uh, hammer so in the meantime I shall put the, the stuff I don't want back I can send all of this through to the and this one too. And we should see those disappearing down here as so they should go back into the appropriate chest. I think the nuggets haven't got a filter on so they'll end up at the in the bottom glass chest which has got everything that, that doesn't have a filter specified. So the next thing is the hammer. What we need for this, I'm going to make some manilium, I think it's called, it's a, the alloy from cobalt and ardite. So what we need to do for that is, I go to my ores chest here, and I've got two chests, this is the one chest that's just containing nether bricks, nether coal, nether sulfur ore and glowstone. And the other, the other chest contains all of the other items. So. Ah, but it's not in there, of course, because it's a Tinker's Construct one, so it's here. So I need a couple of these. We take um, two uh, cobalt and two ardite. And then what I'm going to do with these is turn these into ingots. And the most efficient way to do this is to use um, 
cinnabar from thermal expansion. If I come along here and put these into the alloy smelter, so if I put these two in the uh, wrong one, if I put the induction smelter, we will get three um, ingots for each ore according to the recipe. So we've got, therefore we'll end up with about six ingots. Oh, I like it's a gold ingot as a, as a byproduct for the Ardite. Now, the interesting thing, while that's working along, now we see oh, two. That's pretty cool. We'll do the same for the uh, cobalt. While that's processing, how do you make this cinnabar? Because this is special and it's not it's not something you can find. But what you do is you take normal redstone, go to the pulverizer, and pulverize it. And with a bit of luck, it's supposed to be 25% according to the recipe, but it's not really. I think it's more like 2%. You see here, cinnabar from gold ore. There's a lot of pages here, it's, um, 90 pages of 180 recipes. Emeralds were interesting, five emeralds from one nether emerald, oh, which is quite nice. Wow, well, this is difficult to find. Here we are. Page 88 and 90. Brilliant. So there's a 25% chance of getting a cinnabar from one redstone ore and one redstone ore produces six redstones, which is quite nice. What's up on there? Oh, yes. As you see, I've got three from how many was that? There was six, was there 64? Yes, I think. Anyway, it's certainly not 25% chance. So that's how we get that. Let's go and put the redstone up in here. I use it quite often. So back to the uh, alloy smelter. Induction spell time to the line. This time I get some iron ingots with my um, cobalt. So that's a rather nice improvement. The normal recipe, if you put use it with sand, you would get two for each particular um, ore. And since it's a relatively rare ore, it's worthwhile getting maximizing the output. So, up to the workshop. This time I'm going to take the elevator. And it's night time, so let's have a quick sleep. And all I did there was to right click on the um, on the sleeping bag and it swaps over the, the, the sleeping bag for the armour and back again in the morning, which is rather cool. Now, first thing we have to do is make some manilium. So let's go over here and shove these two um, items into the into my hopper. The hopper is actually feeding directly into um, the controller. Is I think you can put it almost anywhere, but in this case, it's sitting on beside the controller here. So it feeds. No, you have to put it on the controller. And you'll notice it's actually pointing inwards. I just got to look further. You'll see here the um, the hopper feed is going into this controller. That's why I put the controller on the corner rather than putting it on the front, in the middle, because you, when you can't see it. It's a real nuisance. And also I have another hopper here, for example, for putting in things like 
gravel or obsidian if I want to make something like brownstone we're using gravel or obsidian and lead makes hardened glass so you can make automate that which is rather cool too so what will happen is these two items will mix and then it will produce vanillium so what I'm going to do now is I already have a little bit of aluminium vanillium already made it uh, made I shall capture that and I shall then when it smell when it smells it comes out and you can actually simply put a, a tank underneath this the outlet here we are this is where I want to put it so I'll put it here so any faucet at the top you can put a tank straight below it and you can feed the small to, uh, melted metals and in, directly into it how far are we doing right it's all done I've got eight ingots so all I have to do then is to right click this and it goes into this tank now you may be wondering why I've done it that way rather than do it at the front well no reason really it's just a, a something different to show you how you can do it crescent hammer right just right click and you pick it up what I can then do is to put this tank I've just picked up here on the wall and in front of the tank I've actually got a faucet and one of the magics of Minecraft is you can have things floating in the air right now let's start at the beginning we want to make a hammer this is the recipe for a hammer so we need two plate two plates one thick and um, a strong tool rod and one hammer so what we're going to do is we're going to make the hammer and the shaft possibly out of manilium which we'll find out in a second but I also have got here some slime crystals slime crystals are really useful they make very durable devices and what we need is a, not a sword blade I this one a tough tool rod and a hammerhead cast. I can show you how to make those, it's fairly straightforward. You come along here, you pick up a something you want to make, um, no, part building. Let's go to the stencil first of all. So you want a stencil, so you want to make this one. You simply select it with some blank temp patterns and it will produce a template for you. In this case, I've got all I need, so I won't make any more, but I could make this one I think this, this is rather interesting to us I haven't made one of these yet I don't think so then you need some cobblestone which of course I don't have with me right quickly trip down to the down to the workshop where's it gone to there. let's go and get some cobblestone take a stack of cobblestone with me because that's also very useful to have anyway when you're doing with Tom Tinker's construct stuff so Back to the front door. Back to the pat uh, pattern table. I've got this one out. Yes, that's right. Now, from the pattern table, all you have to do is to put the pattern you want. So you can shift click, of course, and then your cobblestone. And then it'll make a, a stone a shuriken, I think it's pronounced, and some scrap. Oh, actually, I've already made one of those. Doesn't matter. And then you can make a cast out of that. I think I don't have any with me. Let's have a look in the cast. Do I want one? Arrowhead nuggets. Oh, okay. And you'd be surprised what you can make with the. Um, on this, on this casting table you can make gears so here's, a, here's an example there's a gear take it pick it up I'm not going to make a manilium gear that would be not very useful I don't think there's any recipe to use it if I ever remember where I put things right back here so I've got these two and what I want to do now is I want to make a, uh, a tool rod but the tool rod I'm going to make is maybe out of I'm going to try it first of all with crystals because it doesn't hurt to have it in either way. Have I got that wrong? 
have I got enough crystals? So maybe. No, material costs three, so that should be okay. Oh, yes. I think that's in the wrong. Do I have to do that? No. no. I thought I had to do it there. Surely I'd have to do it on the part builder. Slime crystals and tough rod cast. It should come out too. Oh, that's confusing. I've forgotten how to do this. It must have been at least two weeks since I last did it. Oh! I'm just being daft, I'm sorry. I have to use the paper version of this, which looks slightly different here. Exactly. Because the, the metal version, of course, you have to use on the smelter's table here. So let's put this, let's do that first of all. Oh. Let's make a hammerhead. Uh, wrong one. Sorry, let's try again. And right click. And you'll see this takes, I think it's about four ingots to make a hammer's head. And then we've got a nice manilium hammer's head. I'm going to do the same for the um, tool rod. Hopefully I have enough manilium. This It needs three for this. Right, now I'm going to pick up the, the chest again. Not the chest, the tank. Try getting it right. And you'll see that that's floated to me. This is because of the electromagnet I've got in the in my hot bar. So now we have various things with us. Let's put away the, the stuff that I don't need. I'm a bit too far away. And we do need some face plates, I think. I might have none. I've got one large paper one. Right, so that means I've got to get some paper, no problem. Let's go and get some paper. see I didn't actually drop any paper on the floor because of this electromagnet but I did hit one I didn't want to turn to the way so and I missed the one behind me oh, no. right it doesn't take very much to break paper go on and of course I've got a crafting station here so we just basically make that like that and then okay three papers and make a few more. I'll just make one more. 39 papers, that's fine. Come back to the parts table. I need this time, I need the face plate and paper and I get another one of these. It takes quite a lot. You'll notice, it's, I think it's 16 or so papers to make one face plate. So now we can do this and we can make actually build the hammer. So we put select the hammer here. And what we will do is we'll put the hammer head here, the two face plates here. And we'll put the manilium here. So what you'll see is here it tells you the durability is very high, 9450. The mining speed is also very fast. The mining level is manilium, which is I think as deep as you can get. And the attack is hard, we don't really care about that. But you've also got five modifiers. And the reason for the five modifiers is because of the the paper plates. They don't affect durability at all, but they do increase the number of modifiers. So if we actually change this now for a different uh, material, in this case the slimy tool rod, you'll see that the durability goes down, but everything else remains the same. And if I get back into my chest, maybe I have a different faceplate made of something else. No. Let's just make one for this, for the sake of uh, demonstration. What have I got in here? Molten steel. Uh, 
Oh, uh, yes, I can use molten steel. So pick up the pick up the tank. If I remember how to do that, of course. Put the tank. Oh, uh, it's in two, isn't it? Put the tank here. Go and get the faceplate mm, cast, which I don't have. Never mind. The reason I don't have one is I've never made one in this particular game. I only use the paper ones. Um, shall we make one quickly? Okay, well, faceplate, stone. Ah, oh, yes, stone. Actually, stone's a good demonstration. Because it's cheap and it doesn't take any time to prepare. So back to our thing, we need back to our hammer. And this time you'll see that if I change the um, paper and put stone in its place, you see that the modifiers goes down and the mining speed actually increases and the durability increases. That's interesting. So you go faster and you get harder. That's very, I didn't realize that. But we'll increase the modifiers because the modifiers are actually more interesting. Five modifiers. And now we have our hammer. Let's go back here. And now we will enhance our hammer. So we can so what we can put on it is a silk touch. And we can also put on it this hardened flux crystal. So I'm ending up with a very durable hammer. I've still got on it modifiers. So modifiers you can do all sorts of clever things with. So let's go and get some of that redstone that I very carefully prepared in the early demonstrations. So I need to go down to the workshop. And I think I left that in the pulver for us, I did. I ended up with four cinnabar, so that's how you use that's how you make cinnabar. And the idea of what we're doing now is to make um, a soft touch hammer, which you don't need the cinnabar for, but the, that was for the manilium. And the reason we want to do the soft touch is so we can get redstone. Right. Now, put the hammer back in here and then start applying redstone to it and you see what it says it then increases its haste it's unfortunately it's rather tedious keep applying that and you'll see now it's got redstone I've got I can apply 50 um, redstone to this I won't do that now because it's really dull so I'll leave that here so I can do it at another time Right, back to my chest. Let's put away the stuff that I don't want with me. I'll leave these here. That's useful to leave here. That's useful to leave here. And that one, I think, is paper. We can leave there as well. Oh, and this tool rod. And a quick sort. And some stone shards. Oh, that's everything, I think. Oh, yes, I've got this table, of course, I've got the table there. Right, now oh, it's night time again. Let's have a quick sleep and while it's uh, till morning. So, let's go and see how the actual hammer works out. So, I'm about to take it off the tip. Why did I put that in the table? That's of course, it's here isn't it, yes, number six I think. Right, let's go downstairs, do some mining. This looks like a suitable place. I've been mining here. Now I'll go down a bit deeper first. Oh yes, here we have some coal. Coal's a good example of a 
effectiveness of a hammer. So if I if I hit the coal here on the top, it will take out a nine by nine, a three by three square block, give me nine coals. And again here, that's some dense coal. Let's take that as well. Now you'll see what's happening. These things are floating towards me as I get to, even though I'm quite a long distance away. And that's because of the um, electromagnet again. Now, while I'm here, let's do something else. Another little demonstration. If I go to my um, knapsack, I have an OD scanner. And OD scanners are great for... See, actually, let's put that here. So that tells me I've got 16 sapphires, 8 coal, 7 silvers, oh, 2 cinnabar oil, but that's a different cinnabar oil, lead oil and 1 uranium oil. Not really very exciting stuff down here, probably because I've done a lot of it. Let's go down here. This was when I had a trouble. What I had down here was a, a mob spawner. Uh -huh. Let's actually do it like this. Let's have some torches here. All right, number three. Right click that and then do it. we can dig this way. Ah, oh, some yellow room. Some more yellow right. But that's, that hammer is actually quite slow. Let me give you a demonstration of the other hammer that I have. This is actually a, an alumite hammer. It's also got haste. In this case, I've got a mining speed of 2.13, 2 and this one has a mining speed of 1.35, so it, it makes a difference. And there's the cinnabar. Now, what else? I'm not sure whether I have it on me today. I should have the excavator, excavator with me. Ah, got that. I just moved that into the other. No, I don't. But let's put a torch down here. Before I do anything else. Rather than spend time, let's go straight back to the workshop. The range of the trouble hammer is, is 100 and about 125 blocks or so. Uh, and let's have a look. What do we have with it? So now I have 15 coal ores and two dense coal ores. Now that's also rather interesting. If you can move it to these devices, you know, I have a sag mill, and the recipe is in the sag mill. Where you can see what you can achieve. So what we're looking for is say coal or dense coal. That's steel ore, which you very rarely find. This was uh, ardite, and you've noticed this gives you two ardite dust and one gold dust, I th and a ten percent chance of that. The doing with this cinnabar gave three and one gold dust is a hundred percent. So much better to do it that way. And let's go. Here we are. Dense coal ore gives you four coal ores. Now what I'm going to demonstrate now, let's put the let's put that coal ore down here. Dense coal ore, one of them anyway. If you put this on before and you just use an ordinary pickaxe for that, you see you get three coals. If I do it in the, uh, it was a signal, wasn't it? I think I did it. Put one of those in there. I'll get four. And I got eight because there's a chance of more. Isn't that good? Okay, that's all I want to show for today. Until next time. Bye for now.